last week, we talked about determining the value of a lead and using that information to be able to start making decisions on your marketing and advertising budgets and the success evaluation of your plan to make sure it was in line with what your expectations were. So today we wanna to take that one more step and talk about the lifetime value of your clients and how you determine that and the impact that information gives you when you're planning your marketing strategy. This is Down and Digi. Thanks for joining us today. I'm your host, Karina Keys, sponsored by Key Media Solutions. So when we talk about the lifetime value of a client, what we wanna do is determine over the course of your client's lifespan, how much value they bring back to your organization, how much they, revenue they generate for you and how much they invest back into your company. So we wanna use that information then to be able to make really smart marketing decisions. So today, that's what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna break that down for you, give you the steps, and then show you why it matters. So step one is really, really easy. We just want to figure out what the average purchase um, value of each client brings to you. And so you select a period of time, let's say, let's look at last year, although we know 2020 was a little bit off, so you might wanna go back to 2019 and take the total number of purchases that happened within your organization, the total number of transactions, and your total revenue generated from those transactions, and you do a simple equation. You take your revenue divided by your purchases, and that's gonna give you your average purchase value. So for example, if you have one purchase is $3.50, one is $5, and one is $6.50, your average purchase is going to be $5. So that's super simple math. Second, we want to determine your purchase frequency. So look at the number of clients that you have and the total number of transactions you had over that same period of time. So if we're looking again at a year, a calendar year, whether it's 2020 you want to look at or 2019, you want to take that total number of transactions and divide it by the number of clients that consisted of those transactions that made those transactions. And that's going to give you your average number of transactions per client. Again, seems really simple, right? We got this. Step three, we, um, we wanna start to determine the annual customer value, how much revenue you get from each client on, within that same time frame. And again, we're talking about a calendar year, so we're gonna stick with that calculation. So again, you take your number, your total revenue that was generated from your clients by your total number of clients. This seems really simple, doesn't it? We've got this. This is easy math, we're not talking algebra or, uh, or calculus here. Fourth, we wanna be able to identify the lifespan of your clients. This one gets a little bit more difficult because it's not an easy calculation that you can pull off of your financial statements. So maybe export a list of your active clients that you have in your, in your billing system or in your CRM and move them into an Excel document or spreadsheet and then add a column that, that you can add in the number of years or the number of months or the number of weeks or days that they have been a client with you, that they have been active and have worked with you, have been making purchases from you. And this is gonna be dramatically different based on your industry and the products that you offer. There's going to be some businesses out there that have clients that, that span several years or, or even 40, 50 years and there's gonna be other of you that really have a short lifespan of your client, but it's really critical to be able to identify what the average lifespan is of your client. Now, if you want a more accurate number, an easy way to do it is lap off the kind of the, the extremes on both ends, take off the top kind of outliers and the bottom outliers, and then average those that remain in the middle. And it might give you a better idea of the average lifespan of your client and how much time that they've been or the longevity that client has with you. Now finally, the last step, step five, is we wanna calculate the total value of that client over their lifespan. So we take that annual av average that we came up with previously, of the value that they that they invest with your organization and we take it times that average time of longevity so if an average client with you spends a hundred dollars and the average longevity with you is three years the lifetime value of that client is going to be three hundred dollars i'm really simplifying this for most of you that is going to be a significantly higher number but i just want to make this easy so that we can all follow along 
So now that we know that piece of information, why does it matter? What, now what do I do with it, right? That's, a, that's the next question is, okay, now how do I apply this? And for me, that information is like a gold nugget because it really is gonna help me identify how much I should be investing in my sales and marketing efforts. What average value should I be putting on a cost per lead or a cost per acquisition? And when I give that information to the agency or to my marketing team, it gives them a benchmark and an actual measurable goal that they can strive towards, that they can build marketing plans around and that they can work to achieve. And you now as the business owner have an opportunity to hold them accountable to being able to reach those benchmarks. So what if that average lifetime value isn't what you want it to be or what you thought it was going to be? This also gives you an opportunity to make a change. Talk to your marketing team, talk to your ad agency, and look at what do you want that number to be? What do you want to grow to? And how can you change your client perspective? How do you change your messaging? How do you change your marketing strategy to be able to build an aspirational plan to get more clients that have that higher lifespan, that higher lifetime value? It's a great question to pose to your team. I bet they're gonna come up with some pretty phenomenal answers. And also note that this number, this lifetime value number, is really gonna be dramatically different for every one of these businesses, every person that's watching this video. Because we know that, you know, we've had one client that we worked with, that their average lifetime value of a client was in upwards of a half a million dollars. So they were willing to invest 250 to $300 on a cost per acquisition because they knew that that would return on their investment over the lifetime of that client, even if it wasn't in the first purchase. We've worked with other clients where the lifetime value was $160. And so they also knew that they couldn't invest any more than $15 on a cost per acquisition or they wouldn't get the return on investment they needed to be successful. So this is Down at Digi. Thanks for joining us today, and I hope you know more now than you did five minutes ago. Until next week, cheers.